Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. Well, we have a new tropical cyclone, which by the way, is the name, the technical term for any tropical storm or system over tropical waters. Obviously in the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific, we call them hurricanes, uh, the Western Pacific and parts of the South Pacific, we call them typhoons. We also refer to them as cyclones in other parts of the world. So they're all tropical cyclones technically. So that's, I know people get caught up on that term, but that's what they are. They're technically tropical cyclones. So this is going to be future Isaias. So it's going to become a tropical storm here. Um, it's very close to it. You can see winds are 40 miles per hour. Technically, that would be a tropical storm, but we're waiting for the hurricane hunters to head out there. They'll be out there. They're going out at one o'clock Eastern time. So we should have a pretty good idea of a couple things, how strong the winds are, but the exact location. So this first cone is kind of just like a, an idea. I wouldn't do, get too caught up in it, but you kind of get the general trend. This is what most of the guidance is looking at. And also notice it keeps it as a tropical storm. But I will caution you, intensity forecast with this is going to be very, very problematic because there's still dry air, the track, the circulation center where it forms are all kind of up in the air. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's start with a close-up view. And I'm going to move my head back down here to get out of the way. You can see the elongated nature of this circulation it basically is stretched out this way. So we've got a cluster of storms here, a cluster of storms there. Now the circulation center is supposed to be there, but it could get tugged here or get tugged that way. Those are all possibilities. And you also notice a lot of dry air to the north. So the dry air to the north is impeding anything to the north of it, um, but to the south, there's a little bit more moisture. You can actually see that big plume of, mo of, of dry air. You see that? It's that Sahara dust. Now, if you haven't watched me or haven't, you know, uh, talked to, you know, talked to other people about what the Sahara dust does, a lot of people freak out when they see it. It's actually, it's pretty normal. But what it does in the Atlantic, if you think about dust or sand from the Sahara, it's like going to the beach. You ever stepped on the beach and how hot the sand is because the sun heats it up? Well, this is suspended fine particles of dust and sand. And what happens is the sun actually heats up that part of the atmosphere. So warm air wants to rise up into cooler air. But if the air above a, of the, the ocean surface is warmer because of that sand, the lifting of that parcel of air doesn't want to happen. So thunderstorms are reduced. It actually causes the air to be stable, we call it. So that's what happens. That's the net effect of having dry, dusty air is it deters thunderstorms because the air just doesn't want to lift into warmer air. You know, there's no buoyancy there. So that's why that's important. And long term, this might become more of an issue with the system and why we got to be very careful because depending on where the circulation forms, if it forms further north, that has huge implications, but it also means it's probably going to deal with more of that dry, dusty air. Let's show you the steering currents right now. Not a lot of change here in the steering currents. We've got a trough over the eastern U.S., but that's not really going to impact it in the short term. Uh, we still got this monster ridge here, which is really the main mechanism. And how far north and west it gets is really going to de depend on where the cir circulation forms, because I actually think there's a couple possibilities here that the system could stay further south and be more of a Gulf Coast threat. So if you're in the Gulf Coast, you really got to pay attention to this because the further west this gets, the less opportunity it has to recurve. And what I mean by that is uh, oftentimes when these things first come off the coast of Africa, way out here, I don't get too worried about it because there are tons of opportunities for recurvature. But as it gets closer to the U.S., these options start getting off the table and the options become more towards the U.S. So the further west the tropical wave gets or a tropical system at all, um, the higher the potential impact on the United States. So that's why you should never really get too freaked out about any system out there. And it's 14, 15 days away also. That's also the reason not to. But there's just a lot of opportunities for it to return. Remember, the Atlantic Basin is huge. You know, we're the United States. We're, we're kind of biased. We worry about us more. But if you're a, a, a single city on the coast, you're really small point on the map compared to the big Atlantic. So just something to keep in mind as we look long range. Now, the guidance, here's a look at it. But again, I'll caution you. We don't know where the center actually is. It's somewhere in here. If it's down here, all this spaghetti could get shifted here. If it's up here, that spaghetti could get shifted up there. So again, this is all going to be dependent on the hurricane hunters going out there. They're also going to send out an upper air mission tomorrow, which will fly over this part of the Atlantic to kind of supplement some of that upper air data we're missing currently because of the lack of commercial air traffic, which usually would give us a lot more of that upper air data. Let me show you what the European model is showing as far as steering currents. You can see that ridge moving across the middle of the Atlantic. Very strong ridge just to the north of the system. There it is. Pretty much pushing it northwest. Now, 
the, the way that this ridge works, if it moves with the system, it would keep moving west. But if it stops, you know, this is like a big gear. It's going to want to pick it up and it's going to pivot on the, on the teeth of the gear and go around. That's what happens. Uh, also, if we get weaknesses or if the ridge builds west, it continues to push to the west. So this is really the main mechanism. And also, don't forget, intensity of these systems also dictates some of their steering currents. And what I mean by that is large, powerful hurricanes tend to control or it impact their environment, and they tend to be turned a lot slower than weak organizing systems. You know, if you think about it, just if it's a weak kind of messy system. It gets picked up by the currents a lot easier than a big, you know, vertically stacked tropical cyclone. So that's why the intensity forecast also sometimes impacts the track forecast. Um, and that's why going over the big islands of the Caribbean uh, sometimes tears the system apart and causes a lot of chaos as far as um, damage because you're talking about huge flooding in Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, but you're also talking about this system being harder to forecast as it moves over kind of that no man's land down there. But the guidance does show something over the southern Bahamas by the end of the week into the first part of the weekend. And then from there, you know, is it going to get picked up here? Is the ridge here going to build and, and curve it back? Or is it going to keep moving to the west and maybe get into the Gulf of Mexico? Those are all things to keep an eye on. And this ridge and any troughiness here is going to be a big part of it, but also the intensity. So you got three moving parts, the ridge, troughs coming down or weaknesses, and also the intensity of the system. Let me show you the probabilities here. I always like looking at these. These are the probabilities of a tropical storm forming. Um, and you can see they're pretty high. They're around 70% over Puerto Rico um, and Haiti and the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, the big island there. But if it tracks over those islands, that would probably tear it apart. And then long range, you could see it moving over Florida. So you're kind of getting an idea where the hurricane center is getting their forecast and then maybe up the East Coast. So that's at least what the European model is thinking. None of the guidance is really gung-ho on hurricane status right now. But again, intensity forecasting is really, really difficult. And one of the things I was looking at today, and I'm going to move my head out of the way, is besides just looking at the models for the track and intensity, I kind of look at what the environment is going to be like ahead of it. So if you see this graph here, this shows the shear ahead of the system actually goes up a little bit, though 20 knots isn't that big of a deal. That's not a ton of shear. It's just slightly higher. Sea surface temperatures increase as the system gets into the Caribbean. Obviously, that's a red flag. But also notice down here, relative humidity, basically how dry the air is. It gets really dry um, as we go through the week. So that's a couple things to keep an eye on. And I think that's more indication of it moving over maybe some islands and some that dry air, dusty air to the north interacting with the system. So a lot to take in this morning. We've got a system now that we can track. It's going to be Isaias. Um, Isaias eventually is going to be a tropical storm. The question is, does it become a hurricane? Once it gets that I name, by the way, that will be the earliest I name on record. The previous record for the earliest I name storm was August 7th, 2005. And we all remember what a crazy hurricane season 2005 was. We went through the complete list of names and had to go to the Greek alphabet. And that's also, you know, you're talking about Rita, Wilma, Katrina, all in that year as well. So let's hope it's nothing like that. But that's the kind of season from a number standpoint, at least we're at. So there's Isaias, uh, future Isaias, I'll call it. Um, tropi potential tropical cyclone nine for now. Once it gets a name, and it could happen this afternoon because the hurricane hunters are going out there. And again, the name is Isaias. This will be moving over the big islands of the Caribbean. Heads up, everybody in the Caribbean, um, regardless of intensity, this is going to be a big, big rainmaker and flash flooding mudslides, a big problem for all of the islands in the Caribbean from the Windward Islands, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, and then eventually the southern part of the Bahamas. I'll post another update tomorrow. I'll be on the air today tracking the system. Again, the time frame, we got a long ways to go still this weekend, possibly impacting Florida. Um, if it were to go to the Carolinas, you're probably talking early next week. Gulf of Mexico would be early next week as well. So don't get too caught up in the cone right now. We're early on. A lot can happen over the next couple of days.